Imagine this, in just three decades, China built a high-speed rail network longer than the rest of the world combined. In fact, it poured more concrete in just three years than the United States did in the entire 20th century. Now compare that with America, where California's bullet train is still unfinished after 16 years of planning. Or look at New York's 2nd Avenue subway, first proposed in the 1920s, and yet it wasn't until 2017 that the first phase finally opened. Just two miles of track and three stations, at a staggering cost of $4.5 billion. Why is one country so good at building big things, while another struggles? And the surprising answer is that China is run by engineers, and America is run by lawyers. And if you're interested in videos like this, make sure to subscribe, and let's get started with the video. In 1988, China had just one expressway. By 2015, it had 74,000 miles of expressway, nearly double the U.S. interstate highway system. In Guizhou province alone, there's over 3,500 bridges, 45 of them ranked among the tallest in the world. And one bridge soars so high that it's higher than the Eiffel Tower, connecting a once isolated village across deep valleys. And by 2024, China had over 30,000 miles of high-speed rail. And that's like building a New York to Los Angeles line, then extending it all the way to London. These trains link Beijing to Shanghai in just 4.5 hours, compared to the 19-hour Amtrak's journey from New York to Chicago. And it's no wonder people joke that every time they visit China, there's a new skyline, new subway, new mega bridge that wasn't there before. And it really makes you ask the question, who's behind China's building boom? And more often than not, it's engineers. Let's take Hu Jintao, China's president from 2003 to 2013. He studied hydraulic engineering and spent his early years supervising dams on the Yellow River. His training wasn't about law or philosophy. It was about managing water flow, solving technical bottlenecks, and making sure that concrete held under pressure. And Wen Jiabao, his premier, was a geologist who spent years in the mines before rising into politics. And even Xi Jinping studied chemical engineering at Tsinghua University before shifting into a political career. And this wasn't really by accident. And after Mao's death in 1976, Deng Xiaoping deliberately elevated technocrats, people trained in science and engineering, into leadership. He believed that they were pragmatic problem solvers, the kind of people who could modernize China's economy and rebuild after the Cultural Revolution. And it worked. By the late 1990s as well as early 2000s, China's top ruling body, the Politburo Standing Committee, was dominated by engineers. And at one point, eight out of nine members had an engineering or technical degree. Imagine if almost the entire U.S. Senate were civil as well as mechanical engineers, instead of lawyers. Every debate would sound different. Instead of arguing over legal interpretation or political sound bites, discussion would revolve around efficiency, output, and execution. That's exactly how China's leadership operated. They see society as a system that can be optimized. Build the bridge, lay the track, expand the power grid, solve the bottlenecks. Politics in this mindset isn't about compromise or persuasion. It's an engineering problem with a blueprint as well as a deadline. If there's a traffic jam, build another road. If cities are overcrowded, design entire new cities from scratch. This mentality explains why Chinese leadership emphasizes physical, visible projects. For them, concrete as well as steel are proofs of progress. You can see a bridge rising out of the river valley. You can ride a bullet train and measure the time saved. And you can also walk through a skyline of gleaming towers and feel that life is getting better. These aren't just abstract policy wins buried in legislation. They're tangible markers of success. And that's why China became a land of mega projects. The Three Gorge Dam, airports that rival small cities, and the largest high-speed rail network in the world. Each project was more than infrastructure. It was a symbol of engineering-minded governance, an approach that saw building as the clearest path to legitimacy as well as national pride. And you can say that China built a system that prizes rapid results. Local officials aren't promoted for good speeches, but for measurable gains, economic growth, new infrastructure, higher tax revenue. That's why so many leaders pour their energy into construction. Wuhan is a really striking example. Between 2008 as well as 2012, the mayor oversaw seven new subway lines in just four years. And residents first mocked him, calling him Mayor Dig It All Up as traffic snared and dust filled the streets. But once the metro opened, travel time dropped, property values climbed, and the city's economy took off, the same people who cursed him began praising him and his career advanced. And for an engineer turned official, that kind of project is a perfect blueprint for success. Identify the bottleneck, design a fix, and deliver it fast. Prestige adds another layer. A provincial governor can walk into Beijing and point to the world's highest bridge or a new airport serving 50 million passengers as a proof of competence. These aren't just abstract achievements, they're concrete, visible, and measurable. 
Citizens can ride the train, cross a bridge, step into a gleaming terminal. Every time they do, they're reminded of the leadership that built them. And behind the scenes, state-owned construction giants keep the machine running. Companies like China Railway Construction Corporation employ hundreds of thousands of workers and depend on a steady stream of projects. Their survival depends on building, and their close ties to politics means that there's always pressure to keep pouring concrete. In the United States, a high-speed rail line might face 15 years of lawsuits and reviews. But in China, once the word build comes down, entire neighborhoods can be cleared in months to make way for a new station. Painful as the process may be, it avoids decades of delays. And that's why videos of Chinese constructions go viral. Workers in Guangzhou assembling a 57-meter bridge in 43 hours, or prefabricated apartment towers stacked together in days. Even when staged for a show, they reflect a system where mobilization feels almost military. Crews, cranes, and material deployed at scale to solve a problem. Underlying it all is urgency. Officials want results that they can point to within their five-year terms, and citizens expect to see new changes fast. In a society run by engineers, waiting 20 years for a subway line, as New York did for the 2nd Avenue subway, would feel unthinkable. Now let's turn to the United States, where the story is almost the opposite. California lawmakers are doubling down on ensuring the controversial high-speed rail project continues, and that's despite ongoing funding issues and delays. Take California's high-speed rail project. It was announced in 2008 with huge excitement, promising to connect Los Angeles to San Francisco in under three hours by 2020. The budget was set at $33 billion, and supporters pitched it as the boldest new transportation project in the country in half a century. But 16 years later, a 171 mile stretch in the Central Valley is under construction. It connects Bakerfield to Merced, but not Los Angeles, not San Francisco, and certainly not at bullet train speed. And costs have soared close to $100 billion, and the project has become a symbol of American infrastructure paralysis. Legal battles over land acquisition, environmental reviews, and local oppositions have slowed the progress to a crawl. And the irony is that during the same period of time, China built an entire nationwide high-speed rail network spanning thousands of miles. And the New York 2nd Avenue subway tells a similar story. First proposed in the 1920s, it became a running joke in the city for nearly a century. Finally, in 2017, the first phase opened, just two miles of track and three stations. And the cost? $4.5 billion, which worked out to be roughly $2 billion per mile, among the most expensive subway projects in the world. So why did it take so long and cost so much? Because every step was weighted down by lawsuits, political overturn, and community opposition. Each environmental review and each public consultation added months or years. Meanwhile, in the same decade, the Chinese city of Wuhan added over 100 miles of new subway track in just four years. And what takes New York nearly a century, Wuhan accomplished in a single mayor's term. So why does this keep happening? Because America is at its core a lawyerly society. Roughly 40% of members of Congress have a law degree while about 5% are trained as engineers. Presidents, governors, senators, America's political caste is dominated by people whose careers are built on interpreting law, not building bridges. In the White House, legal credential often carries more weight than technical expertise, and lawyers are trained with a very different mindset than engineers. They're taught to spot risk, anticipate conflicts, and block anything that isn't airtight. That's valuable when it comes to protecting rights as well as preventing disasters, but it's a disaster when you're trying to move a bulldozer. The result is a society that is excellent at avoiding mistakes, but often paralyzed when it comes to action. Big projects in the United States can be tied in court for decades, only to be scaled down or canceled entirely. The upside is that America is less likely to see a ghost city, wasteful mega projects, or shroudy bridges collapsing soon after completion. The downside is that America often struggles to build what it desperately needs modern railways, affordable housing, or even updated airports. In America, the process is designed to protect you, but that production often comes at the expense of progress. And China's breakneck pace of building has produced marvels, but it comes with serious costs. Sometimes a country builds too much too fast. Entire ghost cities in Inner Mongolia are dotted with empty apartment towers and deserted shopping malls because construction raced ahead of real demand. In the push to pour concrete, local governments have also piled up trillions in hidden debt, much of it tied to infrastructure projects that may never generate enough revenue to pay for themselves. 
And the human cost can also be just as heavy. The Three Gorge Dam, one of the largest engineering feats in modern history, displaced roughly 1.2 million people. Many were resettled against their will, their villages submerged beneath the reservoir, and there were also quality concerns. In 2011, a high-speed rail suffered a crash killing 40 people. Investigations revealed design flaws as well as inadequate oversight. And critics argue that the rush to expand too quickly had compromised safety. For all the pride China takes in speed, the dangers of cutting corners are never far away. The American system, by contrast, avoids all these pitfalls, precisely because it moves slowly. Projects are delayed by reviews and lawsuits, but that means communities get a voice. Environmental protection can stop highways from bulldozing neighborhoods or ecosystems. And the legalistic culture makes it almost impossible to impose a sweeping top-down solution like China's one-child policy. And America's cautious approach may frustrate builders, but it does provide a guardrail that protects people from some of the worst excuses of unchecked technocratic ambition. Analysts like Dan Wang argue that the United States can stand to be 20% more like China, rediscovering its ability to build boldly. Imagine if California's bullet train had Chinese-style execution, Los Angeles to San Francisco in three hours would already be a reality. China, on the other hand, can benefit from being 50% more loyally slowing down to check debt, listening to citizens, and preventing disasters like the one-child policy. Neither model is perfect. Pure speed can lead to waste, and pure process can lead to paralysis. And the future really belongs to whoever can balance both. The ambition to build big, as well as the wisdom to build right. So the next time you step on a high-speed rail train in China, as well as sit in traffic on an aging US highway, remember this. It's not about money or technology, it's about who runs the country and how they think. Engineers build, lawyers argue, and the world we live in reflects which mindset holds power. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed the deep dive, hit a like, subscribe, and I'm not sponsored in any way, but make sure to check out Dan Wang's book. It's a really good take on the United States versus China, more specifically how it's an army of lawyers versus an army of engineers. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys again next time.